Hey there, it's Servile Man. Today we're doing a review of an HTC Freedom model. This is the 144th model for Black Knight's code called Shiva, now on the market. It's an expectation for the White Serpent Tyne. It was released on the 23rd of February 2024, priced at 2,970 yen with tax included. The HG Cosmic Illa numbers featured are 2, 4 and 5. How cool is that beam cloak on the package? The design and coloring showcase the vibe of a true villain. This mobile suit specializes in melee combat and is equipped with three beam sabers and a heat sword. It also has an Aegis-like beam sword on both legs. It bears a slight resemblance to the Berga Gyros from F. Let's unbox it and take a look at the runners. The mobile suit has boob missiles, one, two, three, the cloak and the instruction manual. I've opened up the box and here's what's inside. We got a total of seven runners and three saber effect parts. We have five pieces of Black Knight Scored Turf from 2023 and one each of Black Knight's Code 01 and 02. All are freshly molded. These round runners are probably common among the Rudra set to be released later on. There's also one multicolor runner with four different colors. The light gray one is quite white and has the appearance of a beautiful placa texture. The red is bright and a bit shiny. The gray has a matte texture. The main colored runner, the black one, comes in three pieces with sharp edges but a minimalist mold design. There are two pieces of the light gray runner. The runners on the articulated frame are in a gold metallic molded color, which was often sarcastically said a few years ago. It has evolved from poop color to a much more beautiful color. So it may be a good idea to paint only this runner. There are three fluorescent red beam sabers, two SB13 and one SB9. Other than that, there are lead wires and slightly larger wheel seals and the beam wands are made of PVC. It has a simple gradient and a manual for use and the setting review is 1.9. meters. It's a pretty big mobile suit and the manual is not a booklet but a single spelling and one side is in color. The armament explanation is a very simple type with only the name and no details, and it uses the familiar seed action system. At the bottom, there is a color guide set up with seven colors, but here is a parts list runner is a new model, so there are no surplus parts, but there are three saber effects. So let's put it together and put it on the porching with the lively. The assembly is from the head and the sensor is assembled halfway through and the sensor is selected from two patterns, a mono eye type and a laser irradiated. This time I pasted the mono eye type in vain and the billing color is two colors, black and light gray. The exterior is divided into front and rear and this evil look is good. The fin-like parts on both sides are distinctive and the parts of the face guard are divided and the cheek duct area is light gray but here it is color coded and sealed. The sensor red on the forehead and back of the head is also a seal and there are some other matching eyes but the download process. There is a safety flag at the tip of the ear like part and when I cut it as a test it looks like this. The details on the inside are also modeled and made in detail. Next is the body frame is muscular, the structure is the same as Rifli and Emoja. The movable point familiar to the abdomen, the front exterior is H, the race is quite well done. The hatch of the chest proximity single person projection system is retractable and the moving parts are color coded by overlapping parts with variable connections but it didn't have to be modeled down to the countless needles and this chest warehouse is really well done with the frame and abdomen attached. The exterior is split front and rear, the armament is mounted on the chest, the chest pressure is basive and it's quite hidden. A total of three places come out to the side but the treatment goes down and the back of the abdomen is treated and comes out straight vertically. The movable point is that the neck part moves forward and backward and the function of the arm is that the rim can be pulled forward and not downward. You can angle it up and you can also tilt your chest to this extent because there are points of movement in your abdomen. The connection of the head is a ball joint. Subsequently, the structure of the shoulder armor inside is like this, the exterior is divided into front and rear and there is a joint at the top but it was made into a downlock mold. The gate marks are quite noticeable and the small part at the tip can swing and move. 
The elbow joint is double jointed and the exterior parts are cylindrical so there are no joints. Please note that this exterior part has an orientation so the hand part is only a grip and the connection is a ball joint. The shoulder connection is a uniaxial roll and the elbow movement is double jointed so it bends up to this point. The connection between the body and the ball joint is a ball joint. The lumbar frame looks like this, the hip joint slide gimmick was sadly left out. It's a pity that this area was compromised for cost, it's a fixed part. The front armor is a grey part and color coded. It could be cleanly cut with some treatments. The ultimate cut seems possible. There's no problem with the holdability at all. It seems fine to cut three beam sabers can be used. One on the right side armor and two on the left side armor. They're secured with pins so there's no worry about them slipping out. It's well made. The suit can be removed without stress. The connection of the side armor is a ball joint. It's quite rare to have three beam sabers. The armor type's corners are quite flared up on the front armor. The side armor does not flare up much, if pushed too much it comes off. There's no detailing on the rear side, it's simple and there's a joint hole underneath to connect the action base. The legs are also assembled enough to see the internal structure. The knees are double jointed and there are no special sliding gimmicks. It is a simple structure, the exterior parts are divided left and right. Characteristic snow parts are one part design. The inverted triangle mark on the knee is especially color coded. One part design is largely thick, the foot is quite high heel. The toe bends to this point with a hinge. The connection is a ball joint. There is a thruster on the side of the calf and it is worth seeing. The inverted triangle mold on the knee, the heel on the side and the color coding all became a seal. Aims are almost completely processed, only the side of the calf is produced straight in one place. Other partition lines seen from the gap between the body and exterior are noticeable if you are concerned it may be better to erase it. The movable point is at the base of the hip joint, which rotates 360 degrees, it goes up to 90 degrees, the knee is double jointed and bends to this point. The ankle can move back and forth and the ball joint can move flexibly, but it interferes a little with the exterior parts. The connection of the legs is the shaft, the upper body is the ball joint docking. The backpack is divided into the center and left and right units. The hinge connection part is the placard of the beam wand. Left and right units are independent and rotating movable. The cape unit can also swing. Move connection to the back of the main body is a common 2-pin HG that allows you to bite the parts in between. This is in a state where you are not equipped with a mantle. It's cool even when not equipped and remove the cape unit part once. Insert the beam wands in between. It looks like the matte surface will be facing the front. The material of beam wand is PVC. It's cool that even if you bend it like this, the shape will stick firmly. In addition, it is possible to angle the base of the unit to a certain degree of rotation. You can also let the cloak flow behind you like this. The texture and color of the cloak are not bad either. There's a certain degree of transparency and it looks pretty good. Lastly, the weapons in hand are only for melee use. First of all, melee versus armored sword dispatale. It's a simple look but the blade is a separate part and the joint of the handle is also detailed. There are no pins on the handle, just holding it. But the holding power is good and it is also possible to cloak the rear armor firmly by using special joint parts. Then there's the Rock Shield Svalog Crow, which is an interesting design shield with both sides. The crow part can be opened and closed and the grip on the back is only detailed, which is a little lonely. And the smaller crow parts can be removed and the lead wires can be used to replicate the injection conditions. Yes, the HG Black Knight's Code 4 is the aircraft that Shura, the captain of the completed Black Knight's Code, will be on board. Again, polycaps and ABS were not used and all joints were a combination of KPS. The proportions are arranged from the setting picture, giving the impression of a more stylish appearance. The joints are golden, which goes well with the black main color and makes a nice accent. For the reference of the subsequent largeness comparison, I put it side by side with HG Rising Freedom and the wrinkles before and after are 19. 27M by Rifeli 17. 8M. The position of the waist is different and the wrinkles look about two heads larger so it is possible to say that it is an aircraft that fought in the play and if you put two aircraft side by side you can create an atmosphere. It's cool, isn't it?
Next, let's pose it. Since this is a new model, the narration reads out an outline of the aircraft. The aircraft was developed by the Foundation, incorporating Zaft technology and featuring a slit-shaped Monai with a design not found in other camps, with black colouring as the name suggests. The three beam sabers can be connected together to be used with both ends, and in addition to the heat sword handheld weapon, there are beam swords on both legs that can be used for combat in different situations. The chest-equipped melee single-person projection system can disable face cyst running with countless needles, but it can only be used once per battle. The beam cloak can be used as a slashing weapon in addition to defense. A new generation of driving Femtech driving is adopted, where the beam does not pass for driving. Those are the details of the aircraft. After moving it around, I added the narration. As expected, it's the latest kit specializing in melee combat. The legs open wide and raise firmly. It moves really well. I thought the small claw ejection of the moving shield would also sag when using the lead, but it was light and I was able to make a display without a supporting image. Then I easily displayed the HG Life Right, which surprisingly looked cool with a nice atmosphere. Let's continue by checking the complete set of accessories. The weapons are the focus, melee versus running and dispatail lock shield, wire parts for Sparox Falog, dispatails mount parts and beam cloaks and various saber effects. The surplus parts are more than three saber blades for the convenience of the runner and the accessories are more than next. Let's look at the range of motion. First, the head-to-head -head connection is a ball joint and the base of the neck moves a lot. If you tilt it forward, you can move it up this far. Twisting to the side will interfere with the exterior parts and if you force it to turn, the head will come off. The torso is movable in the abdomen and the base of the waist is also a ball joint so it can be moved back and forth. You can lean back quite a bit and the twist of the upper body doesn't interfere with anything in particular. The movement around the arms which can be rotated in circles can pull the frame forward. You can raise it even higher, the frame works well but the exterior parts are rough and interfere quite a bit. For the time being, the shoulder armor and arm area can be jumped up to this level and let's take a look at the opening of the legs. The side armor doesn't go up quite a bit so I think that if you put it on the back side you can raise your legs firmly, but the side armor will come off. It's a little hard to flush if you can flush it backwards well. But with the side armor off, I was able to open my legs to nearly 90 degrees. I think this is the limit if you take care not to remove the side armor, but if you move it more than this, it will come off immediately. So let's get on our knees at the end and the front armor is cut with treatment so you can bounce your legs up firmly. Yes, the HG Black Knight's called Shiva's kneeling legs are quite long, but even without the hip axis sliding gimmick, it can still do a beautiful kneeling position. The resulting abdomen has a seed action gimmick in operation, so it is well received. As for the operating range, it felt like the latest kit, and there were no parts that were easy to come off. Next up is a comparison of the official completed sample image and the bare frame. The kit comes with one wheel seal. The seal supplementation is quite substantial but without comparing to the completed sample, the color coding seems to be doing quite well. The standout parts are the multiple light grey sections on the undercarriage and the fact that the back of the backpack lacks the red line. Quite bothersome, isn't it? The molding colors, color quality and texture are very beautiful. So it might be nice to just try some partial painting with a Gundam marker or something, don't you think? Well, you've had a detailed look at the HG Black Knight's cord wrinkles, but what did you think? It's a nice kit with a wealth of weapons such as the unique beam cloak and beam sword, and a good range of motion that allows for flexible melee poses. I think there will be many variations of Radra in the pre-van. I think there will also be a lot of Black Knight cords coming out in the future. I believe it will look good if displayed with HG rifles or Inja 2 models. So if you're interested, perhaps you should purchase and assemble one. If this review was helpful, please subscribe to our highly rated channel. Thank you for watching until the end.